Today we're going to talk about an enhancement to the Cisco Web Security Appliance in version 11.8, specifically support for the ICE VDI agent. Let's get started. Here is a diagram of our basic lab layout. What we'll do is use this diagram to walk through the packet flow, why we need the TS agent, how it works, and then after that we'll go into a live demonstration using the same appliances that we have illustrated here on the screen. In the bottom left hand corner we have three domain users on three separate physical machines. Above that is an RDS server. This is our remote desktop services server. It has the TS agent installed. It has a single vSwitch which is bound to a single NIC on the machine. To the right of that we have our web security appliance. Above that the identity services engine and of course the internet. The first thing that happens is that all three users initiate an RDP session to the RDS server. This creates three separate sessions. These sessions could be virtualized desktop instances or application collections. In our case, we're using an application collection which contains Mozilla Firefox. This way, the users can use a browser which is not running on their local machine to access the internet. When they make connections out from the server to the internet, they're going to share the same source IP because they're using the only NIC which is assigned to them on the server. That means when the WSA sees these transactions that are initiated from the server, it will only see a single source IP address. In this case, 192.168.10.52. As we learned in our previous video about authentication surrogates, what we like to do in the WSA is to remember an authenticated user by identifying them by their source address. In this case, that is not possible because all three users are using the same source IP. This is where the TS agent comes in handy. It talks to the identity services engine from the terminal services server and applies mappings of each user to a source TCP port range. This way we know that each user is assigned a specific source port range and we can identify them by checking their source IP address in combination with their source port. This information is shared to the WSA over PixGrid the same way that we get user mappings, SGT tags, and user groups. Now that the WSA can identify the user using a combination of their source IP and their source port, we can apply policies and allow them to the internet based on those policies. The WSA CLI command ICE data now shows a bit of additional information. Instead of just the session number, the IP address, and the username, we can also see the port range which is assigned to each user. Now let's see what this all looks like in the real lab from the perspective of the administrator or the user. So here I have three tabs open. I have my remote desktop services server here. I have one Windows 10 desktop over here. And I have a second one here. My first Windows 10 desktop also has a tab open which is connected to ICE so that we can watch for sessions. Right now there are no sessions listed. You can see I already have my terminal services agent window open. On the configure tab we have some various options where we can set the maximum user sessions, uh, which NIC we want to use on the server, the system ports, user ports, and the range of ports that we want to assign to each user. These are all currently at their default values. I also have two servers that I'm connected to, an ice pick server and an ice server. So my passive identity connector and my full ICE install are two separate appliances and I'm connected to both of them. If we look at the monitor tab, there's currently two entries. These are both for the same session. Uh, they're for the administrator, which is the account I used to log into the RDS server just now. And there's two entries because they're connected to both ICE pick and to ICE. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and log into the first Windows 10 desktop. And what this is going to do is launch a remote desktop connection which will open our remote application. So I'm logging in with VDI user 1. This is going to launch Firefox. It's going to look like Firefox is running on my local machine when in fact it's running on the RDS server. And we'll go ahead and send some traffic through to blue.com just to populate the access logs and make sure we authenticate. Now we'll jump over to our second Windows 10 machine 
and we'll log in, but this time we'll log in with VDI user 2. We'll launch the same application. And we'll get Firefox and we'll browse to the same site just to make sure the transaction looks pretty similar. Now that that's done, we'll jump over to the terminal services agent and we'll look at monitor. Refresh it and we see some more sessions. So there'll be two for each of those user logins because we're connected to IcePick and ICE. We have VDI user 1, which is assigned this port range, and VDI user 2, which was assigned this port range. If we check ICE for active sessions, then we see these are also populated here with port ranges and everything. We can jump over to the CLI for the web security appliance and we'll check the ICE data. The statistics will show that we are currently connected to PixGrid and there's some additional information at the very bottom in this release which shows that we're connected to a VDI server and this is the session count. Let's check the cache and we'll check for the IP of the terminal services server and what we'll find is all three sessions. So the administrator session which is the initial RDP connection that I made to the server, our VDI user 1, and our VDI user 2. So that looks great, but just to make sure, let's grep for blue.com in the access logs. If we look closely, we'll see VDI user 1 and VDI user 2 were both identified by a single sign-on with ICE and they both show the same source IP address. So we've successfully been able to identify the users regardless of the fact that they're using the same IP by checking that port range. So this illustrates well how the VDI agent works between ICE and the WSA.